All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to tonight's webinar on um, on campus student housing. Uh, we have a really awesome guest here tonight to talk to you about some information. Um, but before we get into that, I just have a few things I want to talk to you guys about. Um, tonight, I just remind you to utilize the chat feature. Um, we have faculty and staff ready here at the Office of Admissions um, to answer questions um, for you. So a lot of resources available. Um, so use that chat. Um, also keep yourself muted during the webinar um, so we can hear everybody clearly. And then we're going to be covering a lot of information. Um, so anytime you have a question, hop in the chat. Um, we'll also have a chance for questions at the end. So um, thanks everybody for coming. I'm going to ask Jeff to come hop on now. If, if you can't hear this, make sure you call in. So yeah, once again, a little more about that. And then Jeff, whenever you're ready. Great, uh, thank you, Lane. And uh, it's it's great to be here tonight with the uh, with the staff to talk about housing and uh, answer any questions you might have at the, at the end of the presentation. My name is Jeff Bondi, and I'm the director of university student housing at Montana State. And I work with a great team of community directors and resident advisors and uh, other team members. Uh, to uh, we'll we'll be here to welcome you in the fall. So. Let's go ahead and start with an overview of university student housing. Uh, we have 10 residence hall communities, as you may know. And as I mentioned, we have 115 resident advisors uh, who live on most, uh, on most every floor has a resident advisor. Um, some floors share a resident advisor, but they're a great resource for students. Um, they're there to uh, serve as peer leaders and mentors, plan activities, uh, really help you adjust to uh, life away from home and, and really connect you to the, the, the Bobcat community here. Uh, we have 4,600 residents on campus, and we do have a first year live on requirement. Uh, safety and security is important uh, to all of us at, at Montana State. Um, some of the th things that we do to promote safety and security on campus is, is we have restricted access in all of our halls 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, each student will need to have a, a CAT card uh, each resident will need to gain uh, access to the hall with their cat card and guests must be checked in. Uh, we have 24 seven front desk operations. Um, in, the, in the daytime, most of our halls are staffed with a full-time professional and then the evenings we provide uh, service uh, through our student desk clerks. And, and by the way, if you're looking for a great on-campus job, um, we'll have plenty of student desk clerk positions next fall. Um, we have 24 seven staff on call in each building. We have resident advisors on call. Uh, we have senior staff members who are either a community director or an assistant community director. And then we have a third level, which is myself, uh, one of our area coordinators, uh, or one of our two associate directors. We work very closely with university police uh, just to, to maintain a positive environment in the halls and just to respond to any incidents uh, as needed. Uh, and then also not listed on the slide is we have security cameras on each of our entrances uh, to, to know who's in and out of our buildings. Uh, some of the amenities that we offer in our halls, uh, most halls have in-hall community kitchens where students, if they have a favorite recipe or want to make a batch of cookies or whatever, we do uh, have kitchens in our uh, residence halls. Uh, we provide uh, some additional study space with client, uh, study lounges. We also have some larger social lounges on each floor. Um, bike racks is as more and more students are choosing to uh, bike to class or, or to uh, not bring a vehicle to campus. Um, we have plenty of bike racks outside of our buildings. Uh, we have a very good uh, wireless signal. Um, and so high speed, high speed wired and wireless is available to each student. Uh, we already mentioned some of the 24 seven coverage at our front desks. We also have 24 hours as 24 seven mail service uh, provided as well. We have laundry machines in our residence halls which can be operated with your cat card. And so at the beginning of the year, uh, you can add money on your cat card and uh, do laundry right in your residence hall. We bought new machines this year and we're really pleased with them. Uh, and, and, and we find that that's uh, important to our students. Each room has its individual heat control. And uh, something that we think is probably as important as any amenity is just the, the, the opportunities to connect through floor activities, hall activities, um, and just casual interactions in the hall. All right. Okay, uh, culinary services. We partner with University Culinary Services. Uh, we're a self-operated uh, food service operation. Um, 
my partner, Mike Kasevich, who is the director of culinary services, is very proud of uh, the, the quality of food and, and the offerings that they provide in Rendezvous or Miller. Uh, Miller is open Monday through Friday, uh, 7 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. and Sunday, 7 to 7. Rendezvous is open from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, both of these dining halls were uh, recognized nationally uh, for the just the layout and the, the offerings and the quality, and uh, we're really proud. Uh, and we hope that you'll enjoy the food. If you haven't had a meal on campus, please do that the next time you're here. Uh, we have a five-day and a seven-day meal plan option. Um, you know, I a lot of our students choose the seven-day meal plan because it's such a good value. And again, the students are, are very pleased with the quality and, and the variety of our food options. Uh, if you have any, uh, if you want to talk to a dietitian, we do have a registered dietitian on staff. And uh, Allison LaRock would be uh, happy to talk to you about any food allergies that you may have or special um, considerations. If we don't have it, she'd like to talk about it. Um, but we do have a, a number of gluten-free options. Uh, and, and just uh, if there's an allergen-free um, section of the dining hall that I would encourage you to take a look at. And again, if you have anything that's not there and you need, uh, talk to Allison. I already talked about our nationally recognized awards, and uh, one of the things that we're also very proud of is we do uh, a lot of composting with our food waste. Um, we have uh, student leaders here on campus that will sort through the compostable items, uh, and we work with uh, uh, a city group here to send our composted compostable items out, and then we get it back in the form of compost that we use around campus. 25% uh, of our ingredients are locally sourced through our Farm to Campus program. Um, uh, coming from Montana. So 25% of every meal that you eat uh, is from the Big Sky Country. And we're always looking at ways to expand uh, the, uh, the locally sourced food items. We're very proud of that. Uh, all on-campus meal plans offer unlimited access to both dining halls. Uh, you can see our five-day meal plans, bronze or copper, access Monday through Friday. And you can add cat cash uh, to that uh, that can be used in, for laundry and as well as used up in some of our uh, sub food operations uh, uh, here in, in the Strand Union building. And then you can see the seven day meal options there, um, access Sunday to Sunday, and that also has the opportunity to add that you have $150 of cat cash on that plan. So yeah, you can see uh, just, we have our own bakery, um, the Indulge Bakery here on campus. And if you ever wanna take a tour of the bakery, I would encourage you to do that. We were just through there last week and uh, a very prideful staff, and they were uh, uh, glazing bobcat cookies, actually glazing them in pink frosting for the uh, uh, paint and pink uh, football game. And uh, uh, they were making cake pops and, and just a lot of other items for the dining halls. But uh, they have a lot of specialty baked items that are served in the dining halls and at one of our coffee shops uh, in either Rendezvous or Miller. Okay, we have single gender buildings. Uh, Langford, Han Langford is our all male building. Uh, Hannon is all female and Hapner is all female. Um, we have, uh, our other buildings are co-ed buildings. Some have co-ed floors where there are men and women living on the same floor. Um, and others have it, you know, floor by floor where there are men on one floor and women on the other. Roski is co-ed, um, but it's by floor. We do have co-ed uh, options on the floor in North Edges and South Edges. Um, Highlight in Yellowstone and uh, uh, are also uh, co-ed options. We have a mixed gender uh, living option for students uh, that you, uh, you can live in an apartment setting or a suite setting. And we have men and women living together in those apartments with private bathrooms. And, and if you're interested in something like that, uh, please look at our webpage for uh, more detailed information. We have living and learning communities. Uh, many of these are in South Hedges. We also have living learning communities in Hannon. Uh, we have a business floor, an arts and architecture floor, an engineering floor, um, an honors community. Uh, I know I'm probably missing one other. Um, but go to our website to learn more about our living learning communities. It's an opportunity for students who are interested in a particular theme or perhaps major to be surrounded by students with similar interests. Um, we have a leadership floor and a floor for students that are undecided as well. Uh, so please take a look at our webpage uh, for more information on those. We have special living options for sophomore and above students. Uh, the Madison and Jefferson and really the uh, Madison, Jefferson and Gallatin as part of the Headwaters complex, those are all sophomore and above. We have sophomore and above, op sophomore and above options in Roski and then also offer sophomore and above living in the residence life apartments. 
Okay, North Hedges, uh, for more detailed description on some of our communities, co-ed building and floors, uh, this community houses about 650 students every year. Um, we have community bathrooms, so you don't have a private uh, space, um, but they, we do have privacy in the community bathrooms. It's connected to the Miller Dining Commons, which is great uh, for all seasons, and it's just convenience to be able to walk out of your uh, residence hall room, go down the stairs or elevator, and you're just footsteps away from fresh food uh, every morning and evening. And so uh, that is, uh, I think, really um, appreciated by our students living in North Hedges. ResNet, our ResNet office is located in North Hedges. Uh, that's a help desk that's open to all students. That's uh, kind of our computer geek squad, as they would call it. If you have, if you're having issues with your laptop or your device, or if you need to have uh, the virus protection or one of the office suites loaded on your computer, you can do that at no charge. Um, and that is located in North Hedges. All students uh, living on campus have free access to the ResNet uh, service, and we're very proud of that. South Hedges, uh, just on the other side of Miller, uh, the south side of uh, the Miller Commons is a, it's very similar to North Hedges, although um, both communities form a unique uh, sense of, uh, both buildings form a unique sense of community every year. Um, also connected to Miller, which is great for convenience. Uh, many of our living learning communities are in South Hedges, business, honors, creative arts, sense of place, and emerging leaders. The sense of place floor is a, le a living com learning community for students that may be undecided and they just kind of want to figure out their options and maybe learn about themselves in this wonderful place that's Montana State University in Bozeman, Montana. So that's a floor that's uh, specifically intended for students that want to know about options and be connected to resources that will help them find a major that's right for them. The Emerging Leadership uh, Floor is a floor for students that want to gain additional leadership training and experience and uh, we hope you'll take a look at each one of those. There's a ski wax room in South Hedges and also a nice fitness room in the basement. And I already mentioned it's uh, located close to Miller Dining Commons. And one of the nice things also about uh, South Hedges and North Hedges is really your backyard is connected to the uh, Yellowstone Courtyard. There's a really nice kind of park area back there by what we call Roski Beach um, that is you know cut by Mandeville Creek. There's great places to throw uh, play Frisbee, um, a lot of kids will uh, slack line or, uh, you know, be out in hammocks and, and, and studying, um, but it's a great area to get out and get some fresh air. Roski, uh, you can see the unique architecture of Roski. Um, they're kind of pie-shaped rooms and uh, what looks like a fidget spinner from the top. Um, this is one of our popular, most popular halls year in and year out. Um, the, each room opens out into the kind of the center column, which is our main pod. Um, community bathrooms in Roski as well. There's a ski wax room and a game pod and uh, really great access to that Yellowstone uh, courtyard as well. Uh, speaking of Yellowstone, this is one of our newer residence halls opened in 2016. It's a co-ed building uh, by floor, um, housing 400 students. We have both uh, community and semi-private bathrooms. Uh, it's a Lee Gold building, which we were very proud of at the time. Um, we have single options, doubles, semi-suites, and there's also the well-being living learning community in Yellowstone, which is uh, designed for students that want to focus on their well-being uh, in all areas of well-being. It could be physical, uh, fitness, uh, 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 emotional wellness, uh, spiritual wellness. There's just we want to make sure that students uh, who are interested in, in, in a, a well lifestyle have a good option there in uh, Yellowstone. And that option is also designed for students that they like an alcohol-free living environment, although alcohol is prohibited in all, uh, for students that are not or, or of age in all of our buildings. We have ski lockers and covered in locked bike storage in Yellowstone, which is very popular. And uh, if you've been assigned Yellowstone or when you receive a, a, an assignment, we will put out uh, an option for you to, to sign up uh, for ski lockers and covered in like box, uh, locked bike storage. It is very limited, um, however, uh, Pay, you know, we'll make sure that you have the opportunity and inform you of that in advance. Highlight Hall, opened in 2020. It's a co-ed building, uh, housing 510 students. Again, it has community and gender inclusive bathrooms. Uh, an option, we have options uh, for single rooms, double and triples. Uh, it's a two story. You just have to see the building to really appreciate it. You can see that the floors are connected by this uh, sky bridge. Um, and so you can see the Residents on the floor above you, and you can connect with the, the residents on the north or south wing, but it was really designed 
to have a lot of activity and movement through the building for, and for students to have opportunities to connect. Uh, it's got great study space, great common space, and it's got a really, a couple of nice presentation rooms and class, uh, a classroom in there uh, that uh, you uh, hopefully will get some um, exposure to on your next uh, either visit to MSU or if you end up living in Highlight. Once again, ski lockers uh, and covered in bike, uh, covered and locked bike storage is available on a limited basis in Highlight. And if you get assigned to Highlight, uh, make sure that you pay attention to that. The, we'll send the emails announcing the opportunity to uh, sign up for one of those options. Uh, Langford Hall. Uh, Langford is right across the street from Rendezvous. So if you like good food and, and really, a, I think one of our best living options, um, I used to work in Langford. Uh, Langford's a great space. It's, it's got some of our largest space for men. Um, it's got great storage space in the room. Uh, it's got a very nice uh, exercise room and a movie room and a game room. And so uh, you'll see a lot of activity. You're gonna do, uh, make a lot of friends in Langford. Um, they do, uh, they put on some great hall and floor events every year. And uh, the students that uh, live there leave with great friendships and memories. And so hope you'll take that uh, look at uh, Langford. It was one of our most newly renovated buildings and we're very proud of uh, the way that the remodel turned out. Okay, Mullen Hall. Uh, if you just moved, uh, you're heading down the street, uh, you're moving to the east, you'll see a Mullen Hall. Um, we just put new, uh, installed new lounge furniture and, and uh, soft seating in the, in the lobby, which we're very excited about in Mullen. Uh, it's uh, got 140 students. It is connected. It's part of the Johnstone complex that houses 100, uh, about 300 total students, maybe a little more than that. But Mullen is a, a specifically for freshmen. Again, community bathrooms. There's also an exercise room and uh, there is a pool table and a remodeled movie room. And, uh, but there's a great common area down in the, the, the Johnstone Center uh, main lobby for uh, gathering and, and studying. And I uh, hope you'll take a look at that. Uh, if you have visited Johnstone, I hope you like the new furniture when, when you're on your next trip. Hafner is all female, as I mentioned, 300 students, community bathrooms. There are sinks and rooms, which is very popular to, uh, uh, for our students. Uh, there's a movie room, a movie room, a great, community kitchen uh, in Hapner. There's a nice exercise room and a practice room uh, for our musicians. And there's also ski lockers available for rent. Hannon Hall is another uh, all-female, housing roughly 300 uh, students, community bathrooms, sinks and rooms. Uh, there's a weight room and a practice room, and we do have our engineering and honors LLC in that community. It's right across the street from, or uh, actually, the sidewalk from American Indian Hall, and it's in a really beautiful part of campus with great proximity to our classrooms and the Strand Union building, and, uh, and it's a very popular living option for women. Uh, floor lounges, uh, we have kitchenettes in the floor lounges as well. Um, I would say, you know, Hannon's uh, probably a little quieter um, as well, um, and so uh, a very, a lot of, uh, with our engineering, we have a lot of uh, women in engineering um, that are attracted to that floor with its proximity to our uh, engineering buildings. The quads, our oldest buildings uh, house 130 uh, total students. Uh, these are for our honors uh, college students. And uh, we have about 24 students in each quad. And so um, if you haven't visited the quads, take a look at that. They're very popular. And uh, um, we, we also did some, installed some newer furniture in the quads today as part of our uh, renovation. But it's, uh, um, the, the rooms you're, you're gonna, it's in a sweet style living arrangement with a, a common kitchen and common living room and a study room as well. So um, hopefully you, you, you'll take a look at that if you haven't seen it yet on your next visit. Okay, our sophomore and above options, Johnstone uh, Center, uh, Pryor and Coulter, the University Student Apartments, and then Gallatin, Madison, and Jefferson. So um, we do have living options for sophomore and above students. Uh, that process, uh, application process uh, begins in the spring um, and so if you are uh, a freshman and you have a positive experience, there are opportunities to continue um, living on campus for a second uh, year. Okay, how do you apply? You go to the housing portal. That's listed, uh, uh, that's uh, as part of our webpage at montana.edu backslash housing, or is that a forward slash? Uh, click on application and you can, uh, uh, you can request uh, you're gonna be asked to select, uh, uh, rank a number of uh, hall communities. Um, you can also select room type. Um, you have the ability to request, uh, if, if you have a friend that's already applied, you can request them as a roommate and they can request you. 
and uh, we'll arrange to have you uh, paired together in the fall. If your friend or your the roommate that you're interested in living with has not applied, you won't be able to see them. So make sure you coordinate that with your uh, roommate uh, uh, for next year. If you are interested in an exemption, we do have, there's a, uh, a, a various criteria that will allow you, if you're interested in living off campus, um, please take a look at those, that, those criteria uh, on our website. Um, if you're a local student living with your parents, you would be exempt. If you've uh, earned over 30 credits from another institution and lived on, you know, you would be exempt. And there's some other uh, uh, exemption re uh, requirements there um, listed on our uh, webpage. Uh, move in times. You'll receive more information uh, as we prepare for our fall 2023 move in. Um, once you get a, 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 an assignment, uh, we'll, we'll also provide you opportunities to schedule a move in day time that works uh, best for your travel and your family schedule. The application is open now. We would encourage you to apply as soon as you can. There is a $300 prepayment uh, that will that goes towards your room and board um, once you. Uh, show up to Montana State University. That is non-refundable. Um, well, we, there's a, there is a refund, uh, and we could, we'll uh, talk about that deadline uh, March 1st, where you can get a portion of that back if you decide not to come to MSU. But that saves your space and, and, and uh, also goes towards your room and board in the fall. It is a year-long contract for both fall and spring. And uh, we complete our assignments in an order of completion. So the earlier you apply, um, the better chance you have of getting your the hall of your top choice, um, but we encourage you to look at, you know, as up to as many as four or five residence halls. So you have, uh, in case you don't get one of your top choices. Okay, here's how you can contact us. Um, their contact information is listed on this webpage. We do share an office with culinary services. We're located below the Miller Dining Commons between North and South Hedges. And we would welcome uh, any questions you have when you're on campus or if you want to call or send us an email. We're usually pretty responsive uh, with both to, both to both voicemail and email. Um, so uh, reach out if you, if you need additional information other than what's been shared. And I think we might have some time for questions tonight. There we go. So at this point, I think Lane, I don't know if, uh, uh, if you're going to facilitate the Q&A, but uh, I'll kind of stop talking for a bit. Yeah, no, um, uh, to answer one thing, everyone, there will be a replay of this posted on YouTube later on. So if you miss some information and you'd like to hear from Jeff, you'll be able to find that online. Um, and yeah, we do have some questions, guys. So um, I'm going to ask you the question, Jeff, and uh, it's cool if you and then you answer them. That sound good? Sure. Okay, Thanks. so um, first one we have, uh, I heard if you don't apply, on opening day, October 1st, you won't get into your top dorm choices. How fast do Yellowstone and the high rises fill up? You know, right now, I, I, had, I haven't looked this week. Um, you, your chances of getting one of your top choices is, is still pretty good. And we do have movement, you know, throughout the summer where, you know, students will change their mind. You can always log into the portal and look at availabilities as they become, or uh, vacancies as they become available. Um, you know, I, I think we do have space in uh, some of our most popular halls still. And uh, so, but the earlier you apply, the better, no, no doubt. But if you didn't apply by October 1st, by all means, there's still uh, a variety of, of offerings out there. And hopefully we can find something that works and just stick with it, stay in contact, look at the portal, and usually it works out. And then also when you arrive there, you know, uh, usually students settle in and they're pretty happy with the hall that they've been assigned to, but there's opportunities to move around in, in the fall. Awesome. Uh, Jeff, another question we have for you is how are roommates assigned? Uh, roommates are assigned when you complete your application, you're going to uh, fill out and uh, have the opportunity to list a number of preferences. You know, what time do you like to go to bed? Uh, do you like uh, your room a little quieter? Or is, it, is it okay to have music playing in the background? Uh, is it okay to share personal items and that sort of thing? And our assignments coordinator, Kim Carlson, is very good at uh, you know, working with our software and making assignments where they have a high compatibility score. Um, and so that, that's how we do it. And if, but, but uh, we can always, if you come to orientation and you meet a student that you feel you're more compatible with, we can make changes. And, uh, but we have a pretty good success rate with that. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that you can select a roommate, but if you don't have anybody, we, we have a pretty good system of, of finding someone that you'd be compatible with. Awesome. 
Uh, next question we have for you. Um, can I bring additional kitchen items? Uh, example, toaster, microwave, um, uh, fridges. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about appliances? Yeah, you can bring that. The only really the, we don't allow uh, like open elements like a, oh, like a foreman grill. We don't, you know, I think for uh, the a fire hazard as well as they usually, you know, there's not the uh, not everyone likes to smell what their neighbor is cooking. Um, but you can bring a toaster, you can bring a microwave, you can bring a refrigerator. We partner with CCI Microfridge, where they have a unit with a, a microwave and a refrigerator that is uh, connected. Those, I think, are around $199 for the year. So if you don't want to bring one and take one home, uh, we do have that rental program. That link is on our webpage as well. Um, but, yeah, we would encourage also to look at, you know, maybe you want to buy a smaller refrigerator or microwave, and that's a better option for you. And uh, if you have any specific, uh, for a list of the... Uh, Items that we don't allow, uh, provide or uh, allow, that's listed on our webpage under our community standards. Okay. Um, another question we have are pets in terrariums allowed in residence halls? Um, so maybe just elaborate um, on pets in general in the residence halls. Yeah, if you have, uh, if you are requesting like a support animal or a service animal, there's a process to, to you, 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 there you can, I think on our application, uh, list that, or you can reach out to our office. And uh, what we will do is sometimes have you work with uh, another campus partner uh, that makes those approvals. And then once it's approved from our Office of Disability Services, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, yeah, you can bring a service or a, a, a support animal. Um, if it's a pet, uh, we allow uh, fish aquariums. And, uh, yeah, if it can swim, and standard water, you can bring, you can, I think it's up to a 15 gallon uh, aquarium. Um, awesome. Another question we have is what does transportation on and around campus look like? Uh, if you want to, if that sounds good to you, Jeff. Yeah, we have the streamlined bus service, which is uh, highly utilized. Um, more and more students are, are, are bringing bikes. Um, and there's, I, I think, uh, nice, nice availability for. Um, bike maintenance stations and just bike park, bicycle parking. We do have some covered parking, as I mentioned. Um, and then, you know, just other options, Uber. Uh, we have the little scooters that you see all over uh, town. And so I, there, there are many more, uh, it seems like, options, more and more by the year. You don't have to bring a vehicle uh, if, if you don't want to, or you can. Awesome. Um, and... Uh... We've had a multiple questions about this. Um, can you apply um, for housing at MSU um, before you know if you're attending to MSU? So um, just maybe talk a little bit about the application process once again, Jeff. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can apply before, uh, as soon as you, uh, if, you, if you're if you not confirmed or if you haven't been admitted, you can get an apply. Um, I think now, now check with Anders next to you on that. Um, and maybe Lane, can you ask your question? I wanna make sure I'm understanding it correctly. Yeah, the question is, can we apply for housing if we haven't committed to MSU yet or not sure about attending oh, yeah. MSU? Absolutely. In fact, we would, you know, there is a $300 non-refundable deposit. There's a deadline where you get a portion of that back. Um, so I, I would think, of, you know, just know that, but I would apply uh, and just to save your spot. Cool. Um, on that, you talked about the 300 dollar deposit so in what instance is the 300 dollar fee partially um refunded um that was one of the questions that we had i believe the deadline is march 1st and then uh you get a i think it's a hundred of that back awesome cool um another question that we have um is if we edit our already submitted housing choices will we keep our priority spot to the date um we signed up and paid uh, ask me that one more time, Lane. Yeah. Um, if we edited or are already in, um, submitted housing choices, so if they came in and edited their um, application, will their priority spot from the date um, change from when they signed up and paid? No. You can get in and change your preferences. You could, you know, if you've decided you'd like one hall over the other, uh, no, you can, or uh, any changes you make, your when you submitted your application, your place in line is secure. Okay. Um, another question for you, Jeff, um, you, what is the parking like for students living on campus? 
I, well, I think it's uh, better in a lot of places. Um, I drive around campus and it looks like, you know, we have decent availability. I think it's uh, the, the bison lot near Highlight is, you know, there's usually good availability. I think on the, um, I guess it would be the south end of campus near Roski and South Hedges, there's good availability around our high rises. Um, there, I'll be honest, there's some limited availability by Happner and Hannon. Um, you can park over uh, by the Johnstone complex there, but you know, you, you'd have a little bit longer walk um, from Hannon or Happner, but most students end up uh, finding a spot. Okay. There are, I will say, Lane, uh, there are limited passes, and so if you're interested and that's important to you and you want to park on campus, um, I would, uh, you know, as soon as those become available, just pay attention to that deadline, and that's managed through parking services. Okay, we got some more questions still coming in here, Jeff. Um, so, if you were assigned housing for a hall you did not choose in your top five, what is the process to debate or change the housing assignment? Just reach out to our office, uh, either by phone or email. And uh, what you can do is, is, you know, kind of just tell us what happened. And, and uh, you know, if, if we truly get down to where you don't get into one of your top five spaces, um, we would just encourage you to continue to look on the portal uh, for a vacancy if, if we had someone cancel or move to another building or make a change. Um, but if the building's full, we can't assign anyone else until we have an opening, uh, but just keep checking, stay active in that process. But if you get, uh, if you need to call us, call us. And if there's something that we need to, you know, more context or more information, we would be happy to, to hear that. And, uh, you know, we'll do the best we can. Okay, Jeff, this questions came up a couple, um, couple times. Do you want to talk about when um, the housing, uh, the housing assignments will be made, um, and then when is the final announcements made? Sure. Uh, we usually start assigning in uh, March, April. What we're we're still determining how we're going to do that. Um, I'm a fan of let's let's take some snapshots. Maybe you know every other week we'll send out a, bat, a batch of assignments. And the reason, Lane, we'd like to consider that is it gives students. Uh, maybe a chance to, to, well, I wanted this roommate, I wanted that hall, so let's let them settle in, and then we won't have so much movement, which makes the process slower for everybody. So we're, we're just still talking about what makes sense for everybody, and but usually around March is when we start assigning students. Um, and then, you know, there comes a point where uh, as we start to fill up, uh, you know, the, the opportunity for us to make changes is, is a little slower because we don't have as much flexibility. Okay, cool. Um, still a few more questions. Uh, uh, how available is housing after freshman year? I Well, this year, uh, you know, I think we were able to work through the students that had applied. You know, we did kind of set a limit to begin with. We wanted to make sure that we had space for all of our freshmen, um, but we were able to work through, you know, so we weren't able to assign everybody right away. Um, but we were able to, I think, provide housing to the students that kind of hung in there and, and wanted it. So um, we don't have a firm number, um, but we always watch what the freshman class is going to be. And uh, last year we had a very healthy freshman class. We'll have another one this year. Um, so what we want to do is make sure that we can provide good options for our freshmen and then uh, kind of select a number that um, we feel comfortable with. And then the space that we don't uh, you know, need to reserve for freshmen, we'll open that up. We have space for sophomores right now. We have probably... 65, 75 beds right now on campus. And so uh, we have a number of students that, that change their mind. And, and you know, um, so, uh, but we can, you know, if you have any, any other questions about that, uh, you know, we can, you can call our office and kind of talk through that with more detail. I think we got two or three more questions left. Um, so uh, do you want to talk about uh, the weapons policy for housing and where can I store my weapon in, um, if I'm planning on hunting while I'm going to school? Yeah, a lot of our students do that. Uh, they get out and enjoy the um, the outdoors and, and right in the midst of hunting season uh, currently. Um, we actually uh, funded a, a storage facility that is managed by the university police. Um, and it's a, it's a very, very nice, uh, it's climate controlled. Uh, they have a very uh, efficient and I think a, a uh, a very good checkout process and a convenient process for our students, but we don't allow weapons in the in the residence halls. Um, 
but they do provide that uh, that service uh, through the university police. And, and there's a way to contact them in advance. You know, uh, if you want to get up and go hunting uh, and be on the road by five in the morning, you know, you just contact them in advance, and they have a, a safety officer that can check you out your your firearm and then return it uh, once you're done. But it's very convenient. Um, some of the um, uh, hunting weapons and, and firearms at Student Spring are, are they've invested a lot of money in them, so it's nice to have a secure storage. And it, it's uh, also it's just necessary to promote safety on campus to have that centralized um, place to store. Awesome. Uh, can I apply to honors housing before finding out if I'm in the honors college? Yes. Yep. You can. I had to think about that. Yeah. Um, I, you can see that I'm very reliant on my assignments coordinator, but yeah, you can do that. Um, another question, this um, still may be relevant for some people out there. Are there disadvantages to filing or filling out the application after October 1st? Are there disadvantages to filling it out? Uh, well, I think the earlier you apply, you know, if, if you're if you're very focused on one residence hall, I think the earlier you, you apply, the better. Um, I've been more involved with our assignments coordinator uh, this year, and I, I'm surprised. I, I had that misnomer that, you know, they would all fill up on the day one, you know, uh, some of them are more popular, but, um, you know, if you've got your mind made up, get in and apply. Um, if you can't apply right away, um, you know, you're you're okay. Again, we have, it's a dynamic uh, occupancy and we have movement all the time, but I do think it's the earlier is the better, but, um, you know, we'll have students that get into their top choice that haven't applied, you know, yet. Uh, we still have, you know, um, vacancies in, in, in some of our most popular halls. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. And then a um, couple more still. Um, what is cat cash used for? Cat cash is money that you can add on your cat card that can be used in our uh, our, our sub operations. Uh, we have uh, various operations up in the sub. So if you want to meal outside of the residence hall, um, or excuse me, one of the dining halls, and you just want to kind of get a change of scenery, you can use them up in the Strand Union building. You can use them at the coffee shop um, up here in the sub. You can also use the cat cash to do laundry um, in one of our uh, laundry facilities. Awesome. Um, I uh, don't think we have a whole lot of questions left. I do want to remind everyone uh, this recording will be posted uh, following our conclusion. Uh, give it a take a little bit. Um, but uh, if you have any more questions uh, for Jeff, we're going to help hold them on the line for a little bit longer. While I have your attention, though, um, I'm a student here at Montana State. I'm a senior studying agricultural business. Um, and I work in the admissions office, um, so um, know the steps for the admissions process or, you know, apply first, applying to scholarships, um, applying for housing, which this information will be about. We have a webinar in two weeks um, talking about um, paying for school, so we'll have some scholarships um, on there. We'll be talking about um, some financial aid. So if you have questions about that kind of stuff, um, tune in for that. Um, and then know that orientations will be coming up um, in the spring, the application will open up for orientation. Uh, we have three orientations in the summer and one right before school starts. Uh, we have one in June, two in July, um, and one in August right before school starts. They live in the residence halls for those um, orientations. Um, in the first three, you live with people within your major, start meeting people you're going to take classes with. And then your last um, orientation, one right before school starts, you're going to move into the residence hall that you're going to live in for um, a year. So that's an opportunity for that. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can always contact the admissions office as well. We'd be happy to answer questions about that. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. Do we have any more questions for Jeff before we sign out here? Hold on one second. Okay. Well, once again, guys, thank you for attending tonight. Um, Jeff, you want to roll back to the contact slide real quick? Um, if you have any questions that we weren't able to answer tonight, um, be able to go to the housing website. They'll be able to have the contact links on there. Um, contact, the, contact the Office of Admissions as well. Um, we really appreciate you coming tonight. So, uh, yeah, thank you very Thanks. much. Um,
and uh, we'll uh, be able to talk to you shortly. So thanks for attending. Trying to find your contacts here, but yeah, go to the end real quick. There you go. Yep. Just hit okay. present. Yeah, that'll work. So yeah, okay. um, there's the information for housing right there. Um, and, uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you, Lane. Thanks, everybody.